Hello, Micah here. I'm going to talk about something that may be triggering for some people, so I'm going to give you a heads up right now. It has to do with childhood development and how ways of upbringing, including discipline, can shape our neuro pathways into giving us coping mechanisms that may have helped us or even ways to get unmet needs met. Um, may have worked when we were young, but they are now to our detriment as adults. And I'm going to use myself as an example because I became aware of one over the weekend. Uh, the new moon in Pisces probably had a little bit to do with that because that's kind of what it does. Or it's a coincidence, who can say. But it's important to understand that whatever goes on in our developmental stages, uh, especially birth to 15 or the real prime years, but anything that is happening while our brain is still developing, we don't even remember all the things that happen to us as children that create these neural pathways. And I'm not, that's not to say that something's repressed. Sometimes it can be. But, you know, you can't remember everything that happened to you from birth through 15 years old. Or um, you can remember bits and pieces of your environment, but your memories aren't even always accurate. Everything is fallible, especially when you are young and you're trying to live as an adult with these neural pathways that were created by an underdeveloped child brain. So I was single for many years and it taught me a lot about who I was because the way I grew up was a very strict religious Christian household and uh, the intentions were always good. There was still a lot of love in the home, although I was very, as I've discussed in my other videos where I talk about my love addict patterns that I had to work on, there was a lot of emotional unavailability. There wasn't any um, intimacy in a, an uh, intimacy in the family setting, appropriate intimacy. Um, that wasn't really there. Everything was behind the veil of the religion. And uh, that was the way my parents cope with their own traumas and their own issues. Because, you know, they don't, they didn't have the resources that we have now as far as trauma and what it does and all of that. So intellectually, I understand all of this and have made peace with how I was raised and have a wonderful relationship with my parents and I don't mean to say anything negative about them or anyone from my past because honestly most of the most important people from my past um, we have a great relationship now and a, and a healthy appropriate one depending on who the person is <laughs> so I don't want anybody to take anything I'm going to say wrong um, Everybody does the best they can until they know better and then they do better, right? But as a child, I was raised in a very strict household. And any kind of acting out at all, and you know, my little airy self, I'm sure, did that a lot. <laughs> um, very energetic, nothing like either of my parents in that sense. Um, neither of them had a lot of fire element in them. And then they have a firstborn daughter that's all fire. <laughs> and I sure that I did a lot to try to get attention because I didn't get a lot of loving feelings or intimacy. There wasn't tugging um, in our home. I can't hardly get one now. <laughs> it's very strange. But the physical stuff I did get would be spankings if I was bad. And um, bad being subjective, I suppose. I hate that word. I digress. So my partner sat me down and now let me just preface this by saying I was single for four years because I had gone from being um, in this structured told how to be environment and who to be straight into marriage with someone who grew up in the same religion that had the same kind of teaching to where he didn't have the opportunity to really know who he was or anything either so you put two teenagers together and that's a recipe for a big mess when you neither of you know who you are, what you want. We were young and it was unfortunate, but we're past that now, both of us. I mean, I 
think he is. And, <clears throat> but you still, like, I didn't have the space any more than he did, but I didn't have the space to understand who I was. So a lot of what I did probably seemed a lot like acting out when really I was just feeling out who I was because I never got to date or do anything um, when I was young. And I didn't feel the need to date, but I also didn't understand or know how to interact with other human beings because I was so sheltered. And then from there, I uh, lost everything and went into a relationship because I was homeless and I Mostly we just needed to combine our resources in order to find a place to live. Otherwise, we probably would have never escalated that relationship as quickly as we did. So once I was able to live on my own, and I did that for four years, and I did everything I could to stay single that whole time. Um, obviously, I dated and stuff to just kind of get to know myself. But you learn a lot about yourself when you give yourself the opportunity to be single for at least a year or two years, ideally. And then once you find that healthy relationship, and then all of a sudden I had this partner this weekend who sits me down to discuss some of the things that he began to notice or he's noticed in the last uh, month or two. And I became aware of a pattern that I have always had but partners before would probably just say, oh, she's in one of her moods or just leave her be and she'll snap out of it or whatever it was. It was never really addressed before. I never had the opportunity for it to come up before because, you know, they only love as much as they know how to love themselves, other people, right? So then when you're with somebody who knows how to love himself enough to do the work, for the sake of his child and for himself and the people he's going to interact with throughout his life. And then he holds me accountable in a loving way. It was a little bit jarring for me. And he unearthed something, um, just the conversation alone. And I started talking in circles, which I kind of do. And I know I do it in my videos sometimes. And I apologize for that. But it's almost like I'm unwinding something in my mind. And what I realized is with the discipline and the way I was raised, I see discipline as a form of punishment. And the spankings and stuff, I was always told and still am that they worked for me. They didn't work for my little brother. And they I would get a spanking if my little brother did something wrong because he would behave to keep me safe. And it's strange, but that's the tactic that was used. And so when I became disciplined in making a lifestyle change, when I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I knew what it was that has been making me feel emotionally, mentally, physically, the way I've been feeling for so long, for years now, and I finally have a diagnosis, I was relieved and happy, but I went full steam ahead in a disciplined way of making lifestyle changes in order to improve my health and it's working. But the problem is, is the way I view discipline, I also view it as punishment. So my child self withdrew and because whenever I was disciplined as a child, I would withdraw in order to remain safe. And the less I'm noticed, and this happened for the 35 years of my life, no matter who I was around, in living with, the less I would do anything, the less I spoke, the less I brought any attention to myself, the safer I would be. And so in my relationship, when I start withdrawing, of course, it's telling my partner that something is wrong because people don't withdraw unless they're feeling unsafe or unhappy in some way. And uh, sure, of course, I'm battle depression and um, that's kind of standard with fibromyalgia too um, but what I didn't realize was as good as I felt about how self-disciplined I was I'm becoming in taking care of my health and knowing what I can safely do and can't I also was pulling away from my partner and alienating myself and uh, once we started talking 
it all started to click. Like some of the things I enjoy, I'm not enjoying anymore. And I couldn't really figure out what it was. But then I realized it was because this pattern has been going on my whole life. Whenever I feel like I've done something wrong or I need to step up in some way or I just feel overwhelmed by life, PTSD stuff comes on, anything like that, and I just start to go within. Because the only safe space I've ever known until now or until I lived on my own was here. And that's not the case now. It's okay for me to open up, but I don't even realize I'm doing it. I have been doing it since I was a child before I can even remember. I know that I've been doing it because I know how I grew up just from the stories I'm told from my parents. So I know that my go-to is to withdraw, to go within, because the only person that would ever hug me and love on me was me. I had to give myself little hugs. And so nobody even pointed anything out to me my whole life because nobody cared quite that much. If I withdrew, then they probably, maybe they saw it as, oh, I get time to myself now, or I get to look at my own thing or whatever. I don't know what other people are thinking. It doesn't even matter. It's not worth speculating. The point is, is that I wanted to share this because I thought that it might help make some of you aware of how our patterns that we develop as children still influence us. I'll be 46 in April <laughs> and they'll still continue to influence us throughout our life. But the more aware we are of it, the more we can do something about it. And as soon as we had the conversation and all of this came up, I'm going to try not to get emotional here. Um, I started to feel like myself again, just because he helped me dig through this. And really all I did was talk in circles until it came to me. But he sat there and he just let me unfold. He let the process unfold on its own, which he's brilliant at doing. Very patient. And, um, and I was able to feel connected to him and accept his affection and accept the intimate moment. Even if we weren't physically touching each other, the intimacy of being able to uh, process and unpack something like that with anybody, but especially a romantic partner, is huge. Especially when you're a grandmother that has never ever known what it's like to do that. So I wish for all of you to know that experience with anybody, because with anybody, it is so healing. And I also want to point out that that doesn't mean that pattern is gone. It means that you're aware of it now. It means that each time it starts to come up, you'll notice it. But it might take you a little while to realize it's happening. But each time you make yourself aware of it, the sooner you start to notice it, the sooner you get the opportunity to create a new neural pathway and pause and say, okay, normally I with like Micah, normally I withdraw, normally I go within when I'm feeling this or when this thought crosses my mind. Is there an alternative way of responding that might not make my partner feel like he's being pushed away? Or help me feel more supported because I feel alone right now or I feel like I have to be alone. Why do I have to feel like I need to be alone? Is it something that's happening in the present or is it something that I was taught and learned from the past that I'm pulling into my present? I don't want to pull my past into my present, but we all do it because that's all imprinted on us. But we have the power to see the imprint and create something new around it. So I could talk about creating new neural pathways all day long. <laughs> it's one of my favorite topics. It's not necessarily that we unlearn. We can't really completely change the most permanent part of our neural pathways that are created in our brain when we're youthful and young. But the more we recognize what those neural pathways look like, the more we can create cool new little roads that diverge around them and uh, 
make new tracks in the snow until a new trail pops up that's more beneficial and healthy for everyone. So I hope this was helpful. Um, always keep your ideas coming. I'm going to try to get more consistent now that I'm starting to feel better about my health. <laughs> and uh, thank you for letting me share my recent awareness. So now I know when I really need to withdraw to just kind of unpack what that reason is and maybe communicate it a little better with my partner. So if I do need to genuinely be alone to work through something and process it before I have a conversation, I can at least say that much so that he doesn't feel alienated. And um, because he's earned that much, that's for dang sure. <laughs> so I appreciate you all and I want to send you all the blessings in the world. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, keep those ideas for videos coming and questions. Check out my website. It's got links to all of my social media channels because I kind of share different things on each channel. And uh, my Patreons too. I have two different Patreons. One's more about me and my artistic expressions. That's my shadow one. And uh, it's not for everyone. It's definitely 18 and older. Although if you look at it, you're not going to see anything offensive if you click the I'm okay, I'm 18 and over. You won't see anything crazy. And um, the regular one will have, I'm going to start creating more and more videos on how to things, how to work with different tools, how to help yourself on your healing journey, how to work with different uh, modalities and things like that. I could go on so many different topics from working with the different elements and divination and all of that. So keep questions coming. I love them and I appreciate you. And if I could say any one thing to close this out, it's just be aware. Give yourself, give yourself a hug. You're doing okay. <laughs>